This is Karen. Hi, everyone. This is Shane. Today we're looking at part one of an excellent dessert. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> and the vocabulary <laughs> words are credit. Credit. The actor is credited with making this hairstyle popular. This hairstyle? Mm-hmm.、Oh, very nice. <laughs> neighborhood. Neighborhood. Brad and I live in the same neighborhood. No way. Brad Pitt.、Yes. Oh, yolk. Yolk. I like the yolk of my egg to be fully cooked. Me too.、Mm -hmm. Original. Original. The original story was very different from the one in the movie. Hmm. Flock. Flock. Fans flocked to the singer's hotel, but he had already left. <sighs> so we're talking about an excellent dessert. Excellent! <laughs> so cute. That's right. What's the excellent dessert we're talking about? Egg tarts. <gasps> I love egg tarts. Ooh, do you? I do,、ah. especially the ones from the fast food restaurant. Ah,、oh, so there's a specific fast food restaurant where you like their egg tarts. I think I know the one you're talking about. Yes, it's you, so yummy. You know, originally they're from Portugal. Okay. And I never tried one until I came to Asia, and I lived in Spain, which is right next to Portugal, and、mm -hmm. I had never tried a Portuguese egg tart. Until so, I moved to Taiwan. So you never heard of it, even when you were in Spain. Never even heard of it. Really? Okay.、Yeah. But it was invented in the nineteenth century, eighteenth、mm -hmm. century. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> a while ago, by by monks at a monastery. It's kind of interesting how the story went is because they wanted a long time ago the monks they wanted to use the egg white to starch their clothes, right?、Oh. So they had the yolks left. They said they didn't want to waste it, and that's why they, they invented. Yes, then that's how the egg tarts were born. That's really interesting.、Uh, they are yummy.、Right? I know. Let's learn more about them. Okay. Okay.、Mm -hmm. Let's learn more about egg tarts. Enjoy. An excellent dessert. What do 19th-century Portuguese monks and a 20th-century British pharmacist have in common? Both can be credited with inventing and popularizing a well-loved pastry, the egg tart. Their contributions to the rise of this dessert make for an interesting history and explain how it has spread from Portugal all the way to East Asia. Today's lesson is called an excellent dessert, part one. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff. That's a really great title, Mike. No, no, it's not. I, I hate it too. It's it's a bad pun. It's a terrible pun. Another pun title. We use a lot of these, not just us. You see a lot in newspapers and other places. It's an excellent dessert, but it's made with eggs. eggs. So it's excellent because it sounds like excellent. I'll wait for you to laugh. Okay, now we can continue. Okay,、All、so、right. let's go ahead and st start talking about this so-called excellent dessert. There it is again. And we'll start talking about it by asking a question. Are you excited to to read the?、Article? What do nineteenth-century <laughs> Portuguese monks and a twentieth-century British pharmacist Have in common, and the answer is not going to be a pun. Hey, are you exasperated? You yes, I I am. All right, all right, calm down. I'm extremely it's, irritated. It's just a yolk. All right, so both、That's、can be, <laughs> both both this monk and the, the the who was the other guy? I was thinking pharmacist. Of, the pharmacist. I was thinking of puns. So both of these gentlemen both can be credited with inventing and popularizing a well loved pastry, the egg tart. Yay! The egg tart, yes, which is the excellent. Dessert that we've been talking That's about,、right. and yes, I think we've joke, all had these. You know? Joke and yolk apparently rhyme.、Mm. That's hilarious.、Mm. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the verb credit. If you credit someone with something,、mm. you acknowledge them. You give them their due. You give them credit for something. Yes, the word here is credit. It can be used as a verb or as a noun. For example. The actor is credited 
with making this hairstyle popular. Oh. These two gentlemen, their contributions to the rise of this dessert, the egg tart, make for an interesting history and explain how it has spread from Portugal all the way to East Asia. Yeah, it's very interesting. We often think of egg tarts as almost like a local dessert, certainly、mm -hmm. from Macau, but really the story stretches halfway around the world from Portugal in Europe all the way out to our neighborhood in East Asia. Thanks to these two guys, this, this, this monk and this pharmacist and egg tarts, and I noticed that neither of them are a, a chef or a baker. Nope. So, something's going to happen here. It's,、so. it's going to be a fantastic story.、Mm -hmm. Anyways, folks, let's go ahead and take a break, but don't go away. We'll be back soon. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny. 今天的课文标题是 An Excellent Dessert. Excellent. 嗯，哦，原来这个字它念起来就像形容词 excellent， 表示好极了。只是我们作者故意把字首改成 e g g egg。它是要呼应课文的主题蛋挞。那刚刚 Mike 老师也开玩笑用 exasperated， 它是用来讲这个字 exasperated， 它是用来形容这个感到恼怒的 exasperated， 它是来自动词 exasperate， 它是拼作 e x a s p e r a t e， 表示使什么什么恼怒。好，课文一开始问说，十九世纪的葡萄牙僧侣。和二十世纪的英国药剂师有什么共同点呢？哦、oh, ，那就是发明蛋挞。这种糕点之所以会兴起，还有普遍流行，都可以归功于他们。不过说到蛋挞，同学们可能就会直接想到澳门。那我们就会在这两天的课文里面去介绍蛋挞的起源，看看它是如何从葡萄牙一路传到东亚。好，先来看单字 credit，credit。Credit, credit. 它在课文里面是当动词，表示认为是什么什么的功劳，把什么什么归功于什么什么。那么这个字当名词也可以用来表达认可、赞扬或是功劳。Jeff 老师在解释单字时用到 acknowledge 这个字，它是拼作 a c k n o w l e d g e。这个字是动词，表示承认、认可。好，那么补充单字 pharmacist，pharmacist pharmacist, 表示药剂师 ，popularize。Popularize 表示使什么普及，使什么流行。还有 pastry，pastry pastry 表示糕点。顺便学一下 Portugal，Portugal Portugal 表示葡萄牙。那么老师有提到 Macau，Macau 只是指澳门。接下来课文中 ，An excellent dessert. The egg tart owes its origins to a monastery located in the Belém neighborhood of Lisbon, Portugal. There, monks once used egg white to starch their clothes. To avoid wasting all the yolks that were left over, they made pastries with them. Thus, the original egg tart was born. All right, folks, we are talking about a most excellent dessert, the egg tart.、Mm. Now, let's. Now, by the way, all jokes aside, the story of the egg tart. Is really really good, so don't cluck. Ah、huh? ah,、huh? that was terrible. Don't cluck. I、uh, don't get upset. Let's just go ahead and start reading the story. Yeah, let's let's the read. The story、it. of the egg tart. The egg tart owes its origins to a monastery located in the Belém neighborhood of Lisbon, Portugal. Hmm, so that's where the idea of the egg tart was first hatched. Okay, so it's a neighborhood of Lisbon, Portugal, called Belém. That's okay. I feel like you're henpecking me with these oh, puns. Oh, oh, I'm just having a clucking good time. Already used it. Ah,、oh, sorry. All right. Anyways, a neighborhood. This noun is basically a smaller or a subregion of a larger area, generally in a city. When we talk about neighborhoods. Here in Taipei, we might talk about the Daan neighborhood or the Wanhua neighborhood. But even smaller than that could be your local neighborhood. You might live in Wanhua or Daan or Ximen or somewhere like that. But you might also consider your neighborhood kind of a few hundred meters either side of your house. In your neighborhood, you probably have a shopping street. There might be a park, a school, a post office, a bank, a few restaurants, that kind of thing. And you probably know some of the people in your neighborhood. Maybe even your friends or classmates live in the neighborhood, 
and you go to your local or neighborhood school, something like that. It's the region around which you live. For example, Brad and I live in the same neighborhood. He lives two streets over from me. Good old Brad. He's your neighbor. He's my neighbor, Brad. There you go. That's right. Let's go ahead and move on. Okay, there in Portugal. Remember, we're talking about Portugal. There in Belém, in Lisbon, monks once used egg white. To starch their clothes and to avoid wasting all the yolks that were left over, they made pastries with them. Now here, let's talk about the parts of an egg. First, there's the shell. You don't eat that. Inside there, you've got what you can eat. There's a white part and a yellow part. Okay, the white part, I believe. Well, it's not white until you cook it. It's clear before you cook it, but it's called the egg white. I think the technical term is. Albumin or albumin, but the yellow part. This this much is for sure. The yellow part of the egg is the yolk. Y O L K. That's the yolk. By the way, this word is a noun. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example sentence. I like the yolk of my egg to be fully cooked. I don't want a runny yolk.、Mm, I love that runny yolk. Me but too. A hard-boiled egg with a solid yolk, like you might get in a tea egg. That is good too. That's kind of where the healthy stuff of the egg is. But of course, yes, we use both of them often when cooking. Here they were using the white part, so they would separate the yellow yolk from the white part. And these monks were using it to sort of stiffen and clean their clothes. If you get your clothes starched, you might get your collar. So it's a little bit, you know, stiffer. It stands in a straight line rather than being soft and floppy. So they used the whites for that. They had the yellow part left over. They don't want to waste it, so they made it into a lovely little tart. Thus. The original egg tart was born. Yay. Yay! All right, so this was where the very first egg tart. Before this, no one had made an egg tart. That's why we can call it the original. An original something is the very first of its kind. Many copies were made. It changed in many ways over the over the years. But this was the very first form, the very first kind that was ever created. For example, the original story. Was very different from the one in the movie. I'm probably safe to say I haven't read them, but I'm sure the original Harry Potter books had other characters and other things happened that didn't happen in the movie. But the books were first.、Mm. Interesting. They're the originals. So they sat around waiting for their clothes to be nicely starched while eating little egg tarts. They took the yolk and made this delicious dessert. I'm not going to say. That word again. All right. All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. We'll be right back soon. It's a break. 刚刚两位老师又说了几个跟鸡有关的有趣用语，像 hand pack, h e n p e c k. 我们知道 hand 是母鸡，那么 pack 它有啄的意思。合在一起 ，hand pack 是指对另一半碎碎念、喋喋不休。这通常是指老婆对老公一直碎碎念、唠个唠叨个不停这样子。还有一个字是 hatch，h a t c h。hatch 可以指孵蛋，那它其实也可以用来表达暗中的策划、密谋什么。好，蛋塔是起源于葡萄牙里斯本贝伦区的一个修道院，那边的僧侣曾经用蛋白来帮衣服上浆。文中用到 starch 这个字 ，starch 当名词表示淀粉，不过它在课文里面是当动词。那 starch 就可以用来表达把布或是衣服上浆。为什么要上浆呢？它其实就是用淀粉浆来让衣服变挺变硬。好，再看 monastery。Monastery 表示修道院、僧院。好，用完那些蛋白，剩下的蛋黄总不能丢掉吧？那为了不要浪费，那些僧侣就用蛋黄来制作糕点。于是呢，最早的蛋挞就诞生了。好，先来看三个单字 ：neighborhood、neighborhood， 它可以用来指地段或是邻近的区域、社区 ；yolk、yolk。它表示蛋黄。那我们顺便补充一下，蛋清蛋白的英文是 albumin。albumin 它是拼作 a l b u m e n。好，再看下一个单词 original。original 它是形容词，形容起初的、原本的。接下课文中。An excellent dessert. These days, crowds flock to the world famous pastéis de Belém. 
a small pastry shop in Lisbon that has kept the monastery's original egg tart recipe. The shop, which sells about 20,000 egg tarts a day, keeps the recipe a secret. In fact, only six people in the entire world have knowledge of it. Many shops throughout Portugal sell similar egg tarts, but none of them can compare with the ones made from the original recipe of the monks. Not long ago, we learned about the origins of the first egg tart, the original egg tart. Now, let's go ahead and fast forward to the present. These days, crowds flock to the world-famous Pastes de Belém, a small pastry shop in Lisbon that has kept the monastery's original egg tart recipe. There you have it. The people who run this small pastry shop in Lisbon, they still make the egg tart according to the traditional recipe that these monks figured out long ago in that monastery. Yes, they have kept the monastery's original egg tart recipe, and that's why crowds flock to this world-famous pastry shop. Anyways, here we've got the verb flock to talk about. Now, we can use this word as a noun. You can have a flock of sheep or a flock of seagulls or something like that. You're talking about a large group of a certain type of animal. But here, we're using the word flock as a verb, okay? If people flock somewhere, they move in large numbers to that place or towards that place. That's the idea here. Many people go to this place. The crowds flock there. For example, fans flocked to the singer's hotel, but he had already left. Anyways, this is a small shop, but boy do they ever do big business. That's right, the shop may be small, but they pump out those tarts. It says the shop, which sells about 20,000 egg tarts a day, keeps the recipe a secret. Well, if you're selling that many tarts a day, you should keep the recipe a secret. These are super popular. 20,000 egg tarts a day, but they're probably up. Anyway, that's a lot of yes. egg tarts. Or selling what? A lot of eggs, too. Yeah. A lot of eggs, very true. A lot of tired chickens. In fact, it says this recipe, remember, is so secret. In fact, only six people in the entire world have knowledge of it. Like the recipe for Coca-Cola. Barack Obama, mm -hmm. Kanye West, uh, Steven Spiel no, these aren't the six You people. haven't named a single Portuguese individual mm, yet. That's a very good point. In <laughs> Anyways, fact, yes. no, let's move on yes. and find out. There are a few other places in Portugal they have egg tarts, but not the same type. Yes, many shops throughout Portugal sell similar egg tarts, sure. but none of them can compare with the ones made from the original recipe of the monks. Yes, this recipe hasn't improved for hundreds and hundreds of years. What gives? Do you think Cristiano Ronaldo knows the recipe? I bet you he does not. He's famous. Anyways, folks, with that, that's the end of today's lesson. But don't go away. We'll have more for you next time. 刚刚说到蛋挞起源于里斯本贝伦区的一个修道院，而里斯本有一间小糕点店，它就保留了修道院原本的蛋挞配方。这间店叫做贝伦区蛋挞创始店。这间店是世界知名的哦，每天都会涌入非常多的顾客。那他们每天会卖大约两万个蛋挞，而这间店也一直把蛋挞秘方保密，全世界只有六个人知道。那即使葡萄牙各地有很多商店卖类似的蛋挞，可是都比不上那个秘密配方所做出来的蛋挞。最后来看单字 flock。Flock， 它在这边当动词表示聚集、蜂拥。我们可以用 flock to 加上某个地方表达蜂拥至某地。另外 ，flock 也可以当名词用来表达一群，可以用来指人群啊、羊群，或是用来描述鸟啊、鸡等等体型比较小的动物群。像我们说 a flock of sheep 就表示一群羊。另外，文中用到一个形容词 world famous。World famous 就是指世界知名的。好，以上是今天的讲解，同学们别走开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny， 欢迎收看我们的文法单元。今天要介绍的文法重点有四个。第一个是 the rise of something or somebody。第二个是 wh 疑问词引导名词子句的用法。第三个是 all the way。
。第四个是 owe something to 什么什么。我们先来学 the rise of something or somebody， 就表示什么什么的兴起、崛起。其中的 rise 在这边是当名词，表示兴起、崛起，像是 the rise of esports 就表示电竞的崛起 ，the rise of online bookstores 就表示网络书店的兴起，还有 the rise of internet celebrities 就是网红的崛起等等。好，接着我们来学 W H 疑问词引导名词子句的用法。W H 疑问词像是 what, why, where, when, who, which, how 等等，都可以用来引导名词子句，让子句扮演名词的角色。那 W H 疑问词引导的名词子句就可以用来当主词、受词或是主词补语。好，那我们来看三个例句哦。第一个例句 ，What you did for your friends。Is thoughtful. 你为朋友们所做的事是非常体贴的。好，那在这个句子里面，疑问词 what 引导的那个子句 what you did for your friends 就是名词子句，它是当主词来用。那必须视为单数，所以我们后面是搭配单数的动词 is。好，第二个例句 ，Do you know where my glasses are? 你知道我的眼镜在哪里吗？好，在这个句子里面，疑问词 where 引导的那个子句。Where my glasses are 就是名词子句，那它是当受词用，也就是当动词 know 的受词。第三个例句 ，Is that why you don't like Justin？ 那就是你不喜欢贾斯汀的原因吗？好，同学们有没有看出来句子里面的名词子句在哪里呢？没错，就是 why 引导的那一句 ，Why you don't like Justin？ 那这部分它是当主词补语来用。好，接着我们来学 all the way。好，那它常见的用法有两种。第一种就表示一路怎么样怎么样，它是用来强调距离。那后面你可以接副词或是接 to 加上地方，像是 They drove all the way from Taipei to Taichung。他们一路从台北开车到台东，哇，真是太强！帮你们拍拍手。好，再看一个例句哦。You ran all the way here just to see me. 你一路跑来就只是为了要见我，啊、哦，好感动，也太浪漫了吧！好，再看第二个意思是表达全部、自始至终，或者是一直怎么样。好，例如 ，They sang songs all the way home. 他们在回家途中一路上全程都在唱歌。那最后我们来学。Owe something to 什么什么，表示将某事归功于什么，其中的 owe。它在这边是当及物动词，不是表示欠钱、欠债什么的哦。它是指归功于什么，归因于什么。那 to 的后面你可以接人或是事物，这个意思就跟 credit something to 什么什么是相同的。例如 ，The actress owes her success to her parents。那位女演员把自己的成功归功于父母。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们下次见喽，拜拜。台湾人超爱用的口头禅，换成英文该怎么说？欢迎收看《就爱讲英文》英文，我是 Kate， 我是 Steven。那我发现我在台湾住了一段时间了、嗯，我发现台湾的朋友有很多的口头禅。没错，嗯，像我们第一个啊，嗯，最常说的就是说“好烂哦，烂透了”。对，那英文呢有一个句我们会说就是 “sucks”。哦、oh, ，sucks。对，就是吸这个动作。<笑>但如果是说 sucks 的话，就是台湾人的烂。<笑>对，如果说 he sucks，、嗯、他好烂。那、嗯、如果这个情况很烂的话，我们说 that sucks。That sucks。但常常如果我们今天朋友碰到了一些可能不太幸的一些情况、嗯，我们不知道怎么安慰他，嗯、我们说啊。That sucks. Oh, 也可以用来安慰别人，说就同理他，说哎、欸，真的好烂哦、喔。对对对。OK。好，第二个呢是很狂。对，很狂。<笑>那这个东西我们藏在英文，不知道为什么碰听到一个很夸张的事情，不管是好还是坏、嗯，我们说 That's insane。所以不管好坏都可以用 insane。对，都可以用，除非那个人真的就疯掉了，你也可以说 She is insane。哦，就有点像骂人这样子。对对， okay. 如果他就是真的是有点。Crazy 那种感觉，也可以骂那个人、呃。对，但如果这个事情是真的，哇、嗯、哦、wow, ，That's so cool，That's、okay. insane，That's、嗯、insane。对， okay. 也可以这样。好。好
。第三个呢，我们常说一个人很宅。Oh yes，、嗯、这个呢就是一个 home body。Home body， 嗯，这个宅听起来真的是，如果你把这个两个字 home body 拼在一起，就是家的身体，就是很宅，就是宅在家里的一个身体哦。<笑>对对对。第四个呢，我们常说妈宝，嗯，这个就是一个 mama's boy， mama's girl， mama's girl，、嗯、对你是个 mama's girl 吗？嗯、啊，你觉得呢？我觉得。有可能是<笑>，你认真吗？<笑>还这么效果？<笑>你嘞？那你是吗？我是一个妈妈 boy 啊。OK， 我跟我妈关系超好的。我 like this， 关系超好不一定是妈妈 boy 啊。但是妈妈 boy 就被听起来很像是一个很负面的东西啊。<笑>但是妈妈 boy 也可以就是你跟你妈妈的感情很好啊，对不对？嗯，中文不行。哦，是哦。嗯，那这个就是中文英文的那个文化有点小差别了。中文说人家妈宝就是一定是有点负面。哦，就是你这很 spoil，、嗯、对,对,对，我都一定要回家吃饭啊。啊，然后什么什么都哦，那我要问我妈妈这样其实英文妈妈 s boy 听起来也不是很好的。OK， 但我英文跟我妈感情很好 ，I don't care。OK，OK，、okay. okay. he's mama's boy。好，第五个，好瞎哦。嗯，这个呢就是 that's ridiculous。That's ridiculous。那如果你觉得真的很瞎，你可以加一个 so、嗯。哦、oh, ， that's so ridiculous。对， that's so ridiculous、嗯。Ridiculous 就是很好。是可笑的一种，对，很可笑，就是这个东西真的太荒唐了，嗯、对，荒谬。嗯 ，OK。好，那今天呢，就是讲了一些台湾人的口头禅、嗯，用英文怎么说？好，那我们来进入 Life Action 吧。You know what sucks? I've been single for over eight years. Really? That's insane. But why? Are you a mama's boy? No. Or are you a homebody? Absolutely not. Maybe I'm not tall enough. My first love broke up with me because she thought I was too short. She was so ridiculous. D, that sucks. Dear, that's insane. D 三 homebody. D 四 Mama's boy, or mama's girl. Di Wu, that's so ridiculous. <laughs>